Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. Find two numbers whose sum is 18 and whose difference is 4. Okay, so a pretty straightforward question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the question one more time before I show you the answer. It's pretty short, but uh, really we're going to have to do a little bit of work to get the right uh, uh, solution. So we're looking for two numbers. So we want to find two numbers whose sum, right? So when we add these two numbers up is 18 and whose difference when we subtract these two numbers is 4. All right, so what are these numbers? Well, these numbers are 11 and 7. Okay, now if you got this right, that is fantastic. I have to give you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. Uh, so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in solving math word problems. Now I'm going to be using algebra to solve this uh, problem. A lot of you could have uh, approached this, uh, you know, using trial and error or some other creative way. But algebra is such a fantastic tool. Now, the reason why I didn't say solve the algebra word problem is a lot of you, you know, a lot of people would be like, algebra, I don't like algebra. It makes my hair stand up like this. Uh, I just don't want to do this, and I'm going to leave your video. Well, hopefully, you weren't scared off by, you know, this math problem, and you're like, all right, I'm just going to figure it out using whatever uh, technique that you used. Now, if you did use algebra, that is fantastic, but just remember Algebra is a math tool. It's like a hammer or anything else. It just makes things so much easier, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. And if you didn't know how to do this problem, well, you'll see that this is not that difficult. All right, now, of course, we're going to need to know a thing or two about algebra, but we'll, but we'll get into that in just one moment. All right, so the first thing is that we are dealing with a math word problem, and you always want to use the rule of three which is to read the problem at least three times before you do anything, uh, you know, before you start taking any action. So here, we know that we're looking for two numbers. That's the question, find two numbers. All right, so two numbers, we're, we're thinking about uh, two unknown values. We don't know what these numbers are, but we do know that the sum is 18. So we need to know something about the sum, and we need to know something about the difference, because the difference of these two numbers is four. Okay, so anytime you see the word is, by the way, in um, mathematics, in a math word problem, uh, the word is is always the equal uh, sign. Okay, so you have some sort of equivalence here. So if you wanted to just rewrite this uh, problem and just get rid of the is and put equal, you can do that as well. All right, so let's just talk about these words here, the sum and difference. So if you have two... Um, uh, uh, numbers, A and B. Okay, so we don't know what these numbers are, so we're going to want to use variables. I'll call them A and B uh, for now. So the sum of A and B is what? Well, the sum means we're going to add um, up these numbers. So that's A plus B. Okay, now the difference uh, indicates subtraction. So the difference of A and B is A minus B. Okay, specifically, not B minus A, A minus B. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much everything you need to know to set up this problem. Now, the algebra to actually solve the problem is a little bit, uh, you know, different matter, but that's not that difficult as well. So let's go ahead and actually set this problem up. Okay, so instead of A and B, what I'm going to do is uh, use two variables here. I'm going to let X equal one number because we're looking for two numbers. So I'll let X equal one, uh, one number and y equal the other number because there's no kind of relationship between these numbers here right we don't have like 
one number is three times larger than the next number or one number is five more than the other number. We just have two numbers and we know that the result of adding and subtracting them, we know what those answers are. So uh, here, this is a good case to use two uh, different variables. So we'll let x equal one number and y equal the other number. Okay, so what do we have to do? Well, we have to go back to the problem. So we want to find two numbers, right? So now we have an idea what numbers, um, uh, what variables we're going to use to represent these numbers. So x will be our first number and y will be our uh, second number. So uh, we um, have these two numbers, x and y, whose sum is 18. So what does that mean, whose sum is 18? Well, if these are two numbers, that's like x plus y is 18, all right? So we have an equation. Now, in algebra, okay, if you have uh, two variables, you typically, okay, almost always are going to need two equations to solve. Uh, well, here's the general rule of thumb. If you are, uh, the amount of variables you're looking to solve for is the amount of equations you're going to uh, need in order to solve that uh, is solved for those uh, variables. So here we have two variables, x and y, so we're going to need two equations. Here we just have our first equation, x plus y is equal to 18. So how can we get the second equation? Well, pretty easy. Uh, the rest of the problem here, uh, so uh, find two numbers whose sum is 18, so x plus y, uh, these are the two numbers, the sum, their sum is 18, and whose difference is four. So you might be saying, hey, Mr. you 2 math fan, would that be x minus y is equal to four? And I would say, absolutely, that is correct. So what we're dealing with here is, in fact, a lovely uh, two-variable linear system. Okay, so we're talking about basic algebra here. And now let's see if you know how to solve this system. So I'll give you a bit of a clue here. Uh, for those of you out there that have taken algebra or are taking algebra, the, the way to solve this system, there's basically three basic ways. The first is the graphing method. You could actually graph these linear equations and see where they cross. And if you don't even know what I'm talking about there, well, that's for a different topic. Uh, again, we're talking about uh, systems or two variable linear systems. But there's two um, algebra methods that we can use here to solve this really easily. Uh, the first is the substitution method, and the next is the elimination or linear combination method. Okay, these are both equally fine, but in this particular case, uh, the elimination uh, linear combination method makes solving this system super easy. Now, if you don't know, um, you know what a system is or even how to you know, uh, use these particular methods, I'll give you some uh, specific uh, suggestions here in just one second. But let's go and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just like the way I sneak that in? You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you always stop the video right when it's like into the good part to ask for you you know, ask for people to subscribe to your channel. You know, just skip that part and continue on. Well, I would love to, but, you know, I need your help, okay? I'm not afraid to ask for support, ask for help. And you should not be afraid to ask for help as well, okay, when it comes to mathematics or anything else, right? So, you know, all, you know we just, uh, all of us, you know, I think if you just try to figure everything out on your own, uh, you know, you could you could potentially do that, but oftentimes it's going to take a lot more time to, uh, you know, just work, you know, uh, kind of by yourself, right? And I'm speaking about uh, mathematics here. And, you know, a lot of this stuff applies to other areas of life as well. And if you want to shorten the amount of time to learn math, well, you can, but you're going to need someone to help you out that knows what they're doing. So you got to be very cautious and particular on who you uh, choose to learn math from. Okay, now I've been doing this for like, you know, boy, you know, decades and decades and decades. And, you know, I've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of students. I've made so many errors. I've taught so many. I've learned a lot of lessons learned. I have what they call experience, right? Yes, I have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree and all that good stuff. But that's not what makes me a great math teacher. Okay, well, you know, I think I'm a pretty good math teacher. What makes me an effective math teacher is experience. So just like anything else in life, when you do something long enough, you get pretty good at it. So find an experienced math teacher. Now, if you don't have access to one, I would love to be your teacher. So when you hit that subscribe button, it's like you just kind of join my classroom. But uh, if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. And if you need help with this algebra stuff, systems, etc., check out my full course. Uh, full courses, you'll find links to those in the description. 
And in terms of um, systems, you probably want to check out for basic systems, uh, check out my pre-algebra course if you need uh, a lot more um, if you're at a higher level, uh, I teach this in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, even in pre-calculus, it's a huge topic. Okay, so thanks for giving me a little bit of time to explain why I do, why I, or what, well, why I do what I do, I guess is the way I wanted to say that. So now let's go ahead and solve this system. Okay, so we want to solve for X and Y, and the main objective here is we want to create one equation with one variable. Okay, this is the, uh, when you use the substitution method or a linear combination method, uh, it's basically this, uh, the same kind of um, goal is, hey, let's take these two equations and somehow come up with one equation with uh, just all x's and a number or all y's and a number. We don't really care, but uh, we know how to solve equations like this. Hopefully you know how to solve equations like this. 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. See, this is a one equation with one variable. So we can solve one equation with one variable, but one equation with two variables, we're going to have a tough time. So one of the things you can do when it comes to systems is use what we call a linear combination. And basically what that means is we can combine one equation with another equation, just like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, if you will, to form a new equation that's equivalent to uh, uh, these equations in the system, right? So basically, one of the things that you can do, again, is to combine, uh, you know, add in a column manner. Now, of course, all the variables have to be lined up, x's with x's, y's with y's, and numbers with numbers. So let's go to do this. So x plus x is what? This is 2x, and now we have positive y plus a negative y is what? That's zero. So that is fantastic. So that goes away, and then we have 18 plus 4, which is what? 22. All right, so that's the whole strategy here uh, when we're using the elimination method. We just eliminated one variable. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually see this in action right now. Okay, so uh, we're like, all right, we can get rid of the y's by, uh, you know, using the uh, linear combination, okay, or elimination method. So we're going to add down again in a column manner. x plus x is 2x. Positive y plus a negative y is 0. We don't need to write that. 18 plus 4 is 22. So now we have one equation, uh, 2x is equal to 22, and it's going to be super easy to solve this uh, one equation with one variable. All we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 2. So 2x is equal to 22, divide both sides by 22, x is equal to 11. Okay, so uh, we are almost there, right? We have one of the numbers, so the other number is what? Well, the way to solve for y we have some choices. We can, we know what x is equal to, so we can plug in x into this equation and solve for y, or we can plug in uh, uh, x, we can plug in 11 for this x or 11 for this x and solve for y. So you can use either one of these equations. I am going to uh, use this first equation, so we're gonna replace this x with 11, because now we know that x is 11 to solve for y. So let's gonna do that right now. So 11 plus y is equal to 18, right? So we're replacing x with 11. So let's go to solve for y. All we need to do is subtract 11 from both sides of the equation, and we're going to get y is equal to 7. Okay, so 7 and 11, like the store, 7, 11 is our numbers. Okay, so again, you know, using algebra, you know, to solve problems like this is, you know, what algebra is all about. Algebra is about solving problems. You know, uh, a lot of, uh, probably the most common question that math teachers get is why do I have to learn this stuff? I'm pretty sure, you know, I was seeing this way back in the good old 1980s when I was in high school. It's like, hey, you know what? I'm bored with this, you know. Uh, I've had to just walk around with my crazy uh, mohawk haircut. You know, uh, why do I have to learn this algebra? I'll never use this stuff. And you know what? A lot of people, in fact, never did uh, learn the math, you know, or applied the math that they learned, like trigonometry or whatever, okay? So yes, I'll, you know, I'll kind of, you know, uh, you know, agree with you on that level, but learning math, okay, really is about learning how to solve complicated problems, how to analyze, how to work with data, how to work with information, how to deduce, how to, you know, logically approach a problem. And these are the big skills that, you know, you really want to develop in your life. 
that can apply to so many different areas of life. Now, the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. That's my, uh, you know, take on things, you know, in terms of, you know, especially in the area of, let's say, personal finances, working with money. But if there's anything that involves number numbers, well, then it's going to involve math. So again, the more math you know, the better off you are definitely going to be. Now, a couple quick uh, suggestions, um, again, on uh, this type of problem. We are dealing with systems. So systems is a huge topic, and it's taught, you know, in, at increasingly advanced levels, uh, you know, in pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two. Uh, matter of fact, some of the more challenging topics in uh, algebra have to deal with systems, particularly a topic called linear programming. Linear programming, excuse me, that usually makes students uh, look like this. They don't like that too, <laughs> too much. Pretty difficult. Um, you know, if you're looking for a good challenge, check out linear programming with systems. Uh, that's Those problems, you know, definitely will challenge you. They usually take like 20 to 30 minutes to solve. But uh, anyways, if you are not a math student and you're thinking, you know, you know, you're maybe a little bit inspired to want to relearn math, well, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I'll teach you about systems and much, much more in that course as well. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.